Why President Kagame Should Not Run for a Fourth Term by Ingebaya Victoria Greetings from Africa Flashes and welcome back to our channel. We appreciate your support, so don't forget to like, share and subscribe for more engaging content. In today's video, we delve into Madame Ingebaya Victoria Yumohosa's op-ed featured in the Elephant newspaper from Kenya. The piece eloquently articulates why President Kagame should refrain from pursuing a fourth term, providing a thought-provoking perspective on Rwandan politics. As expected, Kagame's supporters reacted vehemently to Nguyen's opinion. Unfortunately, instead of engaging in constructive dialogue or countering her arguments with facts, they resorted to vicious insults. Shockingly, some have gone to the extreme of advocating for her harm, calling for death threats or imprisonment. This aggressive reaction raises concerns about the state of freedom of expression and political dissent in the region. The international community should unequivocally condemn such behavior. As a leader, K-Game should be held accountable and urged to foster an environment that embraces diverse opinions. It's crucial to emphasize the importance of political pluralism and the acceptance of opposing ideas. Furthermore, calls for the registration of political parties, such as Ingebaya Victoire's Dalfa Umarinzi, should be supported to ensure a more inclusive and democratic political landscape in Rwanda. In her op-ed, Ingebaya Victoire, Umhosa expressed the following opinions. <laughs> Rwanda's 2024 elections allowed the country to move away from strongman leadership to enable the emergence of strong institutions and a governance that was more tolerant of critics. The Constitution of Rwanda was amended in 2015 to allow President Paul Kagame to stand for a third term of seven years. Kagame was re-elected in 2017 and his term ends in 2024. The change in the constitution also allows him to stand for a fourth and a fifth five-year term. President Kagame should not run for a fourth presidential term in the 2024 elections. President Paul Kagame was appointed Vice President and Minister for Defence on July 19, 1994, immediately after the end of the war and the Rwanda genocide. When President Pasteur Bizimungu resigned in 2000, Kagame was elected by the Transitional National Assembly to replace him. In 2003, Kagame was elected president and has been president of Rwanda for over two decades. He has, therefore, risen to higher levels of decision-making over three decades, a sufficient period to oversee the implementation of policies he thought would advance the betterment of Rwandans. Kagame should consider letting another willing and capable Rwandan build upon his achievements and continue to advance Rwanda's interests. Indeed, under Kagame's leadership, Rwanda has made some achievements, but they're also short. First, from a war-torn country, Rwanda has become a state with well-defined and functioning structures and institutions supported by fairly straightforward legislation. In my opinion, this has been achieved thanks to K-Game's administration's commitment to bring about change in Rwanda, manifested immediately after the end of the war and the genocide against the Tutsi. Second, Rwanda has also made some economic gains, even though these can be challenged in many aspects. In 2000, K-Game pledged to transform Rwanda from a low to middle-income country driven by a knowledge economy by 2020. Since then, the Rondan economy has grown significantly and its GDP per capita has increased from $304 in 1995 to $940 in 2022. The country's Human Development Index has soared and the World Health Organization has recognized Rwanda as one of the countries performing well in achieving universal health coverage. The country's life expectancy has increased significantly from 47 years in 2000 to 67 years in 2020. Moreover, according to UNICEF, the government has made some improvements in expanding education across Rwanda. Lastly, through a meticulously executed communication campaign, compelling narratives of Rwanda 
that speak well have been disseminated worldwide. This, along with the country's commitment to deploy its soldiers to multinational peacekeeping missions across the world. Wanda ranks fourth on the list of countries that contribute to peacekeeping in the world, has enabled Rwanda to strengthen its foreign relations with other countries and project its image as a development success story. There are certainly more achievements that President Kagame has made during his 30 years in leadership that his replacement can learn from and retain to move Rwanda forward. However, there are shortcomings. Kagame put the country back on the world map, but failed to create an environment for its citizens to exercise their fundamental rights and freedoms. Upon taking power following a military victory, his political party, the Rwandan Patriotic Front, pledged to bring consensual democracy to Rwandans. But over time, this democracy has transformed into a political system that suppresses political dissent, restricts pluralism, and curtails liberty in Rwanda. Those who dare or are perceived to challenge his government's narrative in Rwanda and abroad are most affected. K-Game's government has often abused its power, conspiring with the judicial system to criminalize its critics. As a result, Rwanda has repeatedly been categorized as not a free country by Freedom House. This has led to independent and intergovernmental human rights organizations and representatives of developed countries that financially support Rwanda publicly criticizing his leadership for lack of political inclusion, human rights violations, and the overall democracy deficit in Rwanda. This situation tarnishes Rwanda's reputation, and Kagame's leadership has been working hard to restore it. Furthermore, independent reports on the development of democracy and governance throughout the world. And in Africa, in particular, all point out that citizen participation in Rwanda remains limited as political participation in Rwanda is limited only to those who adhere to or are willing to be affiliated with his political party, the RPF. This has prevented the emergence of a genuine opposition that could have provided checks and balances across institutions in Rwanda. The repercussions are that lack of accountability within public institutions is rampant, and K-Game has often publicly criticized officials in his administration for not delivering as they should. His pledge in 2000 to transform Rwanda into a middle-income country driven by a knowledge economy has yet to materialize. Rwanda remains a low-income country to date. Failure to effectively engage citizens in decision-making has also resulted in implementing development policies that do not meet the population's immediate needs. Hence, the economic gains made by Kagame's administration can be challenged in many aspects, as previously pointed out. For instance, substantial public funds have been invested in developing the meetings, incentives, conferences and exhibitions my sector, while more needs to be allocated to, to education, agriculture and rural infrastructure development. Thus, despite remarkable economic growth and a significant improvement in the Human Development Index registered by Rwanda since 1994, these achievements are tarnished by high income, health and education in Furthermore, they are characterized by economic injustices such as unfair land expropriation and the uprooting of farmers' crops. Rwanda's human capital development remains below the average for African countries due to a lack of quality education and high levels of malnutrition among children below five years. Only 41% of Rwanda households are considered substantially food secure. The private sector's contribution to growth has remained small, and growth is predominantly led by state-owned enterprises and those belonging to the ruling party. Rwandans have been consecutively ranked among the bottom five least happy populations on the Global Happiness Index. Over the past three decades, curtailed civil liberties and mounting social inequalities have seen Rwandans seek refuge abroad and prevented from returning to their homeland, those who had fled Rwanda after the RPF took power in 1994. This situation has exacerbated the issue of Rwandan refugees that has persisted since Rwanda's independence. In particular, under President Kagame, the unresolved issue of Rwandan refugees 
settling in Rwanda's neighbouring countries has been a source of political tensions between Rwanda and its neighbours. The Rwandan government has maintained that there are hostile forces resident in eastern Dart Sea that are out to destabilise Rwanda, a reference to the Democratic Forces for the Liberation of Rwanda FDR. The FDR is an armed group formed by Rwandan refugees in DRC who, following their forcible eviction from Rwanda during the genocide, resorted to armed struggle as a means of retaking power in Rwanda. Despite Rwanda's armed forces launching military operations against the FDR on numerous occasions on Congolese soil in collaboration with the Congolese army, the Rwandan government continues to insist that the FDR is a threat to Rwanda's. The United Nations has twice, in 2012 and 2022, accused Rwanda of supporting the M23, an armed group that is fighting in the eastern DRC. This conflict has displaced populations and led to the death of millions of African civilian lives. In 2016, the Un-Security Council accused Rwanda of recruiting and training Burundian refugees to oust the then Burundian President Pierre Nkurunziza. Western countries have suspended or withheld aid to Rwanda over allegations that it supported the M23 in 2012, and some of Rwanda's donors have recently publicly called on the Rwandan government to stop supporting the M23 and remove its troops from Eastern GSC. The European Union and the United States of America have sanctioned Rwandan military officials for backing the M23. The US has placed Rwanda on the Child Soldiers Prevention Act list and suspended its military aid to the country due to Rwanda's support of the M23, which the US says recruits and uses child soldiers. Not only do these allegations of Rwanda's involvement in the regional conflict further tarnish the country's image that Kagame's administration has worked hard to restore, but the tensions with neighbouring states have also prevented Rwanda from maximising the benefits of regional integration and trade for its development. President Kagame should not run for a fourth term as the governance of Rwanda needs to be reformed to become more tolerant of critics, democratic and inclusive. Successfully implementing such reforms in governance requires a new leadership with fresh perspectives and approaches that will build on Kagame's achievements to address Rwandan's unresolved historical grievances while enabling Rwanda to maximise its potential in the region and experience genuine development. Considering Rwanda's history of long-serving strongmen who have taken power, retained it and lost it through violence, the 2024 presidential election is an opportunity for Rwandans to experience the transfer of power peacefully and trans- as has been the case in neighbouring countries, including Burundi, Dark Sea and Tanzania. It is an opportunity for Rwanda to move away from strongman leadership to enable the emergence of strong institutions to take the lead instead. This can be achieved by building on the legislation that has been reviewed and implemented under Kagame's leadership. Therefore, while recognising with gratitude the achievements that he has made over the past three decades, Kagam's most remarkable achievement yet would be to step away from power at the end of his term in 2024. In so doing, Kagame will have paved the way for better leadership in Rwanda and opened the door to future Rwandans aspiring to become leaders in Rwanda. In her op-ed, Ingabaya Victoire passionately argues that Kagam should heed her insights. She emphasises the importance of Kagame considering her perspective, urging him to listen to the concerns she raises about his potential fourth term. Kagame must shift his focus towards the future of Rwanda beyond his leadership. The uncertainty surrounding what might happen if Kagame were to face unexpected circumstances highlights the need for a thoughtful and strategic approach to succession planning. Even after his tenure, Ingebaya's op-ed encouraged Kagame to contemplate Rwanda's long-term stability and prosperity. While expressing dissenting views, individuals need to engage in respectful discourse. Ingebaya Victoire, Umohosa's call for a reasoned discussion instead of insults or threats emphasises the need for a constructive exchange of ideas, encouraging people not to resort to personal attacks, but instead respond with factual arguments ensures a more productive dialogue that contributes to a healthy political environment.
In conclusion, we reiterate the importance of constructive dialogue and thank you for your attention. Please remember to like, share and subscribe to continue promoting open discussions on crucial matters like the future of Rwandan leadership.